everybody, I'm Robin0928, and welcome back to My Little Robin Reviewing His Magic. We've been through quite a journey this year. We've lost a friend and found out that an old enemy is back for revenge. Oh, hello, Mr. Robin. I'd like to talk to you. Who may or may not be outside of my door? Either way, despite all the crap going on, I've actually been able to review almost every single episode of Season 5. We've seen a mental breakdown, epic monologues, utter fanboying, and so many other memorable moments this season. And here we are, the end of the line. And it's an Apple Stereotype episode. So let's do what we always have done and take a look at the good, the bad, and... And the transition is complete. One more time around, Mr. Robin. Wouldn't have it any other way, whiteboard. And take a look at what we think overall in the main attraction. Wow. Truly wow. This is one of the best episodes I've seen in a long time. Now, I personally prefer Crusaders of the Lost Mark, and I do think that this episode has some problems, but as a creator and a filmmaker, this episode spoke to me on a level that some of my favorite films do. Now, the story of this episode was incredible. Getting to see Apple Stereotype's history with Ra Ra was absolutely adorable, and it gave us an amazing first song. Speaking of the songs, they were all fantastic. From the acoustic version of Equestria Our Home to the techno mix of The Spectacle, all the songs were not only awesome but were beautifully performed by one Miss Lena Hall, who I was shocked to find out is an actual artist with a pretty dang good album on iTunes. If you liked her singing voice in this, I definitely recommend checking her out. The music also played well into the themes of this episode, about finding your true self and forgiving yourself for past mistakes. With this episode, I think it's finally time for me to drop the Apple stereotype joke, as she was one of the best characters to carry out this episode. She's genuinely concerned about her friend and works to resolve the problem. She takes on an active role and tries to find the good in her childhood friend, and it actually shocked me about how much of her southernness was underplayed for comedy in this episode. In in fact, a lot of the comedy was underplayed in this episode, as it chose to take a mature story and take itself seriously. Even the mean-spirited jokes with the torture of Pinkie Pie was only a small running gag in the episode, as she was mainly taking a background humor with the main story of AJ and Ra Ra being the focus. Speaking of Ra Ra, she was... actually an amazingly well-rounded character. Remember what I said in my crossover with Canned Cream about one-shot characters? Well, this is exactly what I wanted from a one-shot. She has a lot of depth, as she chooses to adopt a public appearance, which is more reserved around her fans, yet she opens up around AJ in the folds, and she loves doing charitable work. It's amazing how much character they squeeze in just with her design, her veil being a major part of it. Her transformation to opening herself up and abandoning her stage persona made me legitimately cry a little. I've become synonymous with my work in the MLP reviewing community that the persona has become who I am around people, yet I've had to open up a little bit more over the course of this season. Basically, I loved this episode so much. It kept me invested in almost every aspect of story and character made me emotional and warmed my heart a little bit. So, was there anything here that made me a little bit skeptical of this episode's intention? Well, I did hate a single aspect of this episode. The manager. He not only was a true douche throughout the entire episode, but it's also a very unrealistic depiction of music managers, especially for what's supposed to be a charity show. Most managers are fairly open to doing charity shows, as it's essentially free promotion for their client. And you know what? Managers don't take advantage of charity in the real world! I know that this is one of the easiest things to criticize, but it's a little bit annoying to see a representation of musical managers. In the real world, managers are much more open to free charity promotions, mainly because it makes the artist in question look like a much better person. Usually the demands like what was shown in the episode are reserved for just a regular tour. I know this is supposed to be a straw man for corporate managers who just don't get the artist, but it disrespects and disregards all the work that a manager really does. Considering that Ra Ra is now going to be a free agent, let's go over a list of her new duties. She has to organize her tours, pay for said tours, manage any record deals, and pay any of the employees she now has working under her, rather than just with her. I'm sorry, but they took this huge decision for an artist and just neglected it to, he's a jerk and now he's fired. Either way, this little flaw is nothing compared to the amazing work that this episode does and the fantastic message it presents.
How could I not love this episode? It's got great jokes, amazing new characters, fantastic animation, a nearly perfect story, save for a couple annoying hiccups, a truly beautiful moral, and heartwarming songs. If I actually ranked episodes, then this one would have been in my top 5 for season 5. All in all, that's been a theme for the season. There have been some amazingly heartwarming and emotional episodes. It seems almost like this episode as well as the rest of the season, is a big redemption arc for the faults of the past, telling us to move on and look forward to the future. And maybe, that's what I'll have to do. My name's Robin0928, thanks for tuning into the season, and I'll see you guys next time. Alright Robin, what's the plan? Not this time, buddy. For a change, I only have a plan to save you guys. Not me this time. Oh no, you are not going to do something that stupid. I finished the season! If I can't convince him to let me live, I just need to make sure you guys don't get hurt. Robin, you do not mean that. I've got nothing left to lose. I got my friends back. To me, that's all that matters. Oh. Oh, I am... Oh, I am very clever. Oh, I have got a plan. You got a plan? Oh, you betcha I have a plan. Let me just tell you, it is one of the best plans I have ever had. All right, whiteboard, I'm going to need you to open up the door on my command. Nobody's going to die this time. You know, maybe after this whole debacle is over, I should get rid of the coat. You know, it's nice, but it's starting to get a little bit small on this body. But, um, I don't know, maybe I should just get rid of it after I kill Robin. Oh, what the bloody hell! Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Why did you run to the middle of this field? This is literally the worst place that you could have stopped. You could have run in any other direction and you would have been perfectly fine. So why stop here? That's the point. I give up. Why? Why run if you're just going to give up? I give up. Kill me. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, and that's okay. Listen, I can't possibly understand what you must have felt when I stole your TARDIS, but at least I can give you the closure you want. Get up. Get up, because you have more life to lead. True, I may have been very angry when you stole my TARDIS, but I saw you save the world with it. And when I see what lies ahead in your future, I know I couldn't have been robbed by a more deserving person. I will warn you, Mr. Robin. Dark days lie ahead in your future. You and your team will face hard times, but in the end, you will emerge a hero. Then be a hero with me. What are you talking about? You can join the team tonight. We can build you a new time machine. We can get you home. If you really want to be a hero and you want our forgiveness, then join with the team and be a hero. I don't know if I'll be a hero, but I can join your team, Mr. Robin. I won't be here all the time. Think of me as your guardian angel, protecting you and giving you advice when you need it. Past, present, and future. Thanks. Thank
I was sold. I did all the things that I was told. But all that has changed now I'm bold. Cause I know that I am just a pony. I make mistakes from time to time. But now I know the real me. And put my heart out on the line. And let the magic in my heart say true. Whoa, whoa. Magic in my heart, say true. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just like the magic inside of you. And now I see those colors right before my eyes. I hear my voice so clearly, and I know that it is right. They thought I was weak, but I am strong. They sold me the world, but they were wrong. And now that I'm back, I still belong, cause I know that I am just a pony. I make mistakes from time to time, but now I know the real me. And put my heart out on the line, and let the magic in my heart stay true. Whoa, 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 whoa. And let the magic in my heart stay true. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just like the magic inside of you. It's like the magic inside of you.